Hi, welcome to the Greer SoCal Show. Today, I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Thomas Curran, who's getting ready to walk across the United States with his dog in Moving On West. Tell us about your walk. Sure, yeah. Uh, well, in February, well, late January, I'm gonna fly out to the East Coast to Charleston and hang out with my son for about a week. And then he's gonna drive me up to Holden Beach, North Carolina. And uh, the goal is February 2nd to take my first steps westbound and uh, uh, with the goal of ending up in Newport Beach at the pier. And how long will this take you? Um, I'm guessing uh, maybe nine months, maybe uh, eight. It depends on him, it depends on the weather, it depends on my old body. Right. We'll see. Well, we have to backtrack. So where did you get this crazy idea? Um, a couple of months ago, maybe three months ago, I was reading on my Kindle and I saw this thing about a book called By Men or By the Earth. And it was a story written by a guy named Tyler Coulson, who was in his mid-30s, lived in Chicago, and a little disenchanted in life, and uh, he decided to just chuck it all. He was a lawyer, um, drove out to Lewes Beach, Delaware, and walked across the U.S. and he wrote this amazing book. He's an incredible writer. I read about his follow-up book, which I love the title. Yeah, How to Walk Across America and Not Be an Asshole. Yes. And that was kind of his um, how-to guide. Mm -hmm. And I've read it now twice, cover to cover. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all marked up and everything. It's it, it. Tyler definitely was a changing moment in my life. He doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. I've, he's, he's out there in the world somewhere. I don't know where, but uh, he's he's definitely with me in spirit there, and then I and that took me to a couple of other books by a few other people who have done it, and I ended up talking to a few of them on the phone. And uh, just today, I spent an hour on the phone with uh, a woman named Kate Sayall and her husband John. They did the walk several years ago with four dogs. Well, they started with two, and then they picked up a few, and um, and so I you know I just had this fantastical idea that maybe I wanted to do this, but. I had a restaurant and I was busy and then it, I ended up coincidentally about a month later um, selling my half of the restaurant to my business partner. And what was your restaurant called? Taco Brat. Yes. Yeah, in Costa Mesa. Uh -huh. So uh, it's still operating. He's still got it going. Um, it was just time for me to kind of take a break. I've been doing this for 25 years and I just needed to stop for a minute and figure out. Well, I turned 50 in December, so I needed to uh, figure out the next 50 years. I'm what? You're bragging. I'm bragging, yes. <laughs> I'm 50. Yeah, so I decided to take 2019 and, and walk across the U.S. And, and you're doing this also, you have a charity component, which is huge. So tell us about that. Yeah, it, th that's really cool. Um, I, well, I have to say that it didn't start out as a charitable Thing. It was pure, it was totally selfish. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to go do this for me. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a charity that's close to me, the Pediatric Cancer Research Foundation, and I've known, I've been close to them for almost 30 years. And I decided that if I'm going to do something like this and I can raise some money, then I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I contacted them, they said, absolutely. So my goal is to raise as much money as I can mm -hmm. uh, between now and the time I leave and, and also on the walk and um, cut them a big fat check at the end of the walk. And, Hopefully and next were, October. -ish. You were uh, touched by a pedi pediatric, ca pediatric cancer. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that for a little bit? Tell us what, what happened. Well, I can, I'm fortunate that I have not personally had to deal with that. However, um, uh, my ex-wife Leslie, who is still my best friend, um, she was a, a survivor of childhood cancer. Mm -hmm. And her family, uh, her father was a physician at Children's Hospital. And through them, meeting her when I was 17, 18 years old, um, became aware of the PCRF and have been, I've gone to their events, I've donated cooking classes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a moment to be able to give back more if I can. You're not doing this solo, so tell us about your companion. Yeah, this is Wink. Wink, say hi to the camera. <laughs> Wink is new to me. Um, I've had Wink 
for a little over three weeks now. And I rescued him uh, from a place called The Barking Lot down in San Diego. And they rescue a lot of dogs from Mexico um, and dogs from Korea. And I was there for a couple of hours playing with a bunch of dogs. And I narrowed it down to a few. And I was sitting there, and he was staring at me. And I asked him if he wanted to go home with me. And he winked. I mean, Aww. literally he winked that right eye. Uh -huh. um, so that was sealed the deal, and that was his name. And it's weird because I come from a family of winkers, and uh, so it, it just worked. And we kind of saving each other right now. And and how do we know that he's going to be able to handle the extreme heat and cold, et cetera? That is a great question. So before I even considered bringing a dog, I researched breeds that can do this. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that most dogs can walk across the US. Mm -hmm. They can walk that distance, mm -hmm. but not all breeds can deal with cold and hot. Mm -hmm. And he's a mutt. He probably has 10 different dogs in him, um, but he's predominantly uh, Labrador. He's got some Shepherd in him, definitely some Foxhound. So all, and all of those breeds are good for um, hot and cold. I'm working really, really closely with my vet who's checked him out several times. And I've known her forever. Her name is Megan Whistler. And she said, Tom, I've known you for about 15 or 20 years. And I think Wink has a better chance of making it than you do. <laughs> so we, uh, we've hit some long miles and some big hills already. And I'm done by the time we're done. And he is just getting started. So now, now tell me, are you going to be climbing any mountains on this? Or can you, we, or at least some steep hills? And how, oh, yeah. how will you be doing that with the dog and your cart? And We're going over the Appalachians, the Rockies, and maybe the Sierras, depending on what I end up routing after um, Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a really amazing cart that I, 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 it doesn't require a lot of effort to push that thing, even with 100 pounds in it. Mm -hmm. um, our days are going to get slower as we go up, and they're going to be slow as we go down. Mm -hmm. um, but we kind of plan on those you know, five to 10 mile days versus 30 mile days on the flatlands. And, um, and that's the plan. But yeah, it's gonna be a lot of up and down, especially in um, right outside of Denver going into Utah. And what is, is the plan what, from state to state? Can you have those? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, we have a start and a stop. It's, uh, we're gonna start in Holden Beach, North Carolina. And we're starting there because my son's name is Holden. Right. And it's right near his house in Charleston. Uh -huh. um, we're, the plan is uh, to go to Asheville, Knoxville, Nashville, and then I'm going to go a little bit north up to Louisville to meet some people that did this. Kate and John Sale are going to host me for a couple of nights. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go west into Missouri, um, and we're going to stay uh, in the Lake of the Ozarks for a little bit. A family friend has a house there, mm -hmm. so we'll probably take a little break there for a week or two. I don't know, see how we're feeling. And then it's due west, straight to Denver, really. And when we get to Denver is when we'll start coming back down uh, over the Rockies, into Utah, down through Vegas. And then uh, we've all made that horrible drive. Yeah. I get to make that horrible walk. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you talked about possibly, or your dream would be to stop at different kitchens, do cooking. Yeah, I would, I would love to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna reach out ahead of time to small cafes and things like that. I'm, gonna, I'm avoiding as many big cities as possible. Mm -hmm. so I wanna Denver stay small. Vegas. Yeah, well, I'll kind of skirt around Denver uh -huh. uh, and skirt around Vegas. Mm -hmm. It's just, there's too many crazy people in right. big cities. Um, Speaking of crazy people, yeah. Uh, what are your fears, if you have any? You know, before I had the dog, before I had Wink, I decided to list my fears. Top two fears are crazy people and wild animals, mm -hmm. um, which is why he's perfect. I mean, he's a good warning system. You haven't heard him bark yet, but it's pretty deep and severe, mm -hmm. uh, even though he's just a love bug. Mm -hmm. um, so. I figure he's going to be great for safety, companionship, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, he will know, uh, you know, that in the wilderness, in the tent, for nine straight months, camping on the side of the road, etc. Mm -hmm. He'll hear stuff before I will, mm -hmm. and that's going to help me out. Uh -huh. It'll keep me warm when it's cold. <laughs> so that's a look at Thomas Kern's upcoming adventure. You can follow him on movingonwest.com. Thank you for watching Greer SoCal Show.